Hi everyone, this is Michelle Romolia and I am the president and CEO here at Woodland Pond. And this is my weekly address for a Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, May 14th, 2024. I wanted to get started today with re reminding everyone about the risks of uh, being scammed or, or defrauded. Yesterday, uh, we received a notification from a resident that had been received a phone call and folks had gotten her on the phone for quite a while. And unfortunately, they were uh, very sophisticated and very convincing. And even though we all know that uh, no one will ever call and ask you if they're a legitimate person for your social security number over the phone, uh, your date of birth, those kinds of things. She unfortunately did give up um, some very confidential information uh, and realized after the fact that that was probably a mistake. Um, it obviously did turn out that that was a problem and that it was a scam. Uh, so this is the reminder that number one, my advice is if you don't recognize the phone number of the person that's calling you, just about every phone number or every phone at this point has caller ID. Don't answer the phone. Um, even if you don't have caller ID, let it go to voicemail or go on your answering machine and then you can call the person back. But I know everyone sort of was raised with the idea that if the phone rings, you should pick it up or it's the polite thing to do to answer the phone every time it rings. Chances are these days, a lot of the times the phone calls that you're getting, especially if you don't recognize the phone number, um, it's either going to be some kind of a robo call, which is you know, either the warranty department or a political phone call or someone soliciting money, or it's going to be a scam. So just don't answer the phone. Um, same thing with emails. A lot of times there are a lot of scams on emails, but the ones over the phone, if they start asking you questions, um, they might say, you know, it may sound legitimate. A lot of the ones that they're doing now are they're telling you that it's a Microsoft problem for your computer. And they might call and say, um, I'm calling from the Microsoft um, tech technology um, help desk. And we noticed that your uh, software for Microsoft needs to have a bug or a problem fixed. And we need you to log into your computer. Well, we understand that that might alarm you, but they do too. And they might have you go to your computer while they have you on the phone and have you log in. And when they do that, they may say, okay, go to this website and you go, you do that and you follow their instructions. And they might have you type in a code and then they might ask you for some more information. And you might think you're doing the right thing because they're convincing you that you have a problem with your computer and they're calling you um, to help you fix that. But really what they're doing is they're scamming you. Um, they're getting access into your computer and then they might get access to your bank accounts or, you know, all different kinds of things. You might get a phone call from someone calling you and saying it's the Amazon fraud detection unit. And, um, maybe that you placed an order and that may sound familiar to you. Uh, and then they tell you that they need maybe your social security number or your credit card number to get it rectified. And that may ring a bell to you and you may think, gosh, they're calling me to help me, but they don't do that in real life. And that's a scam. So you really have to be very, very hyper vigilant and conscientious uh, when you get phone calls. Um, I always recommend just don't answer the phone unless you absolutely recognize the phone number. And if they really want to get in touch with you, you can call them back. Just don't give any information over the phone. If you do have a problem or an issue and, or a question, you can call down to concierge and let us know what happened. And uh, we can provide some advice to you um, or call a family member. Um, but you have to act really quickly if you think that a, a scam or a fraud has happened against you. Because once these folks have access to your accounts, they act really quickly. So you have to act fast um, and we will do what we can, but a lot of times it's too late. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to tell you that there are 
thousands and thousands, if not millions of people that are just out there full time trying to access other people's protected information, uh, bank accounts, credit cards to do bad acting, um, unfortunately. And unfortunately, seniors, and especially seniors that have means or money, um, which most of our residents fall into that category, are uh, the prime targets. Um, the next thing that I wanted to just chat about quickly, uh, I've got several things, but I wanna thank everyone for your patience and cooperation with the, um, Oh gosh, you guys can probably hear the uh, blowers going outside my window from the landscapers. Hopefully it's not too loud. Uh, your cooperation and patience with the paving that we just completed, uh, the parking lot and the uh, paving that we did on the roadway came out fantastic. I know that we had a couple of issues with the demand for the EV charging stations and it does highlight a few things that I'll just mention quickly. Um, it's really important that uh, as we continue to grow, and uh, certainly the demand for electric vehicle charging stations uh, continues to grow, we do plan to install you know, an increasing number of these every couple of years. As you know, we went from two to six uh, in the last six months, which is great, uh, but four of those did get taken offline during the paving. Um, please do be conscientious of parking in those spots, just like handicapped spots, we have to be really conscientious of that. Um, we again did see a, a, a sort of um, folks using the handicap spots and uh, the EV charging spots uh, during the paving in a way that they were not intended to be. And um, I was actually a little surprised to see some negative uh, behavior by residents when they were asked to not do that um, and to be respectful of their neighbors that's not the Woodland Pond way, of course, we know that. Um, so if we ask you to correct that behavior and to um, adhere to the signs that are there and park in an appropriate location, please do that. Uh, we are available to help you move your car. Um, obviously, we don't wanna do that all the time. We don't have the staff to valet everyone's car, but you know, we were in a situation where we had asked you for cooperation. So of course we can cooperate as well. Uh, but we do have, you know, the signs for three hour handicap parking or electronic electric vehicle parking uh, because those are services that we provide and we do need people to cooperate with that. The other thing I wanted to mention is um, one of the things that became evident during the uh, the paving process was it turns out that there are more vehicles on this campus than we realize that don't either don't have a licensed uh, driver associated with them. Uh, possibly the vehicles have not been driven in quite a while, are disabled for one reason or another. Um, it seems like there are a number of residents that perhaps were drivers at one point and are not drivers anymore. Um, we really need residents that are no longer driving their vehicles that are located on our campus to have those vehicles uh, dealt with basically. Um, so if you're no longer driving your vehicle and it's here on campus, we need to work with you to have that vehicle um, disposed of, donated, sold, whatever the case may be. Uh, you will be seeing more and more announcements about this, but that did come up. That was highlighted as an issue during the paving. But again, thank you very much. Uh, we are continuing our spring and summer of preventative maintenance on campus. More projects to come. Uh, today and uh, yesterday, you will have seen Dave Roberts, our capital projects manager, working with Shelly Holiday, who is the hospitality consultant that we've hired as part of the master planning team. Uh, she's traveled in from the Philadelphia area, and she's meeting today with our focus groups related to dining. And uh, they're going to be doing a lot of discussion and work on kind of getting the feedback on questions that Shelly has put together based on her years and years of experience doing hospitality, which is really sort of the dining and dining related um, issues in senior living. Uh, she's been doing this for years. So thank you to all the participants in that process. And uh, to the folks that have signed up for the other focus groups that are not dining related, we are gonna be getting uh, meetings scheduled on those in the next few weeks. So please do stay tuned, but things are definitely moving forward. And management Q&A tomorrow, Dave will have an update for everyone. Uh, 
couple of housekeeping type items. The April phone list uh, accidentally placed Terrell Fairley, who is our uh, IT uh, manager, put his phone number with, mix it up with David Coates, who's one of our uh, maintenance coordinators. I, I can't remember which one was which, but I guess Dave has been getting a lot of phone calls for Terrell. An updated copy of that phone list is available at Concierge and I think has been emailed out. So if you have the old version, uh, the original version of the, I guess it was the April phone list or maybe the May, those phone numbers are mixed up. Um, so please make sure you have the current phone list. Uh, our new fitness coordinator started yesterday. His name is Matt. Uh, if you haven't seen him or met him yet, you will if you are out and about and looking for a dose of fitness. Uh, please introduce yourself and get ready to meet Matt. Uh, he is a very nice gentleman, and I'm sure you will all be uh, happy to inundate Matt with your ideas. Uh, and the last thing I just wanted to touch on briefly, and there will be a lot more to come on this, um, if you do walk around the uh, different parts of the campus, you will start to be really seeing the fruits of the labor of the uh, task force. No. Yeah, I guess it's a task force um, of the sustainability committee that is focusing on ways that we can do different things related to our grass here on campus. And this arose out of a desire to see what our options were um, in terms of an alternative to grass, an alternative to treating uh, the grass with heavy chemicals. Um, and we are doing a number of different things to look at alternatives to that. And there will be a significant amount of uh, sort of education on this, what the uh, objectives are, but um, some of the real visual things that you'll see right now are, um, you will see that we are currently in a period of not mowing the most vulnerable areas of uh, our, gra our originally cultivated grass. So if you look at the perimeter road, you'll see that the, um, there is a, a swath of that original grass area that is currently not being mowed. Um, you'll look around, if you drive around in New Paltz, you'll see signs that say no mow may. Um, and that's because a lot of the pollinators and um, insect life are, um, you know, sort of coming out of their, I guess, larval stages and things like the early stages of life um, in this time of the year. So th that's a really vulnerable period for them. Uh, we did make a commitment to not mowing. You will see that there's, um, you know, really exciting growth happening there. I know some people like, as we say in the, in the, a subcommittee to have everything look like a golf course. Um, but that's actually sort of counterproductive to, um, you know, certain habitats. Uh, so we're, we're looking at some opportunities there. Um, and you will also see that our test gardens, uh, there are four test gardens that we are working with the landscape architect and our uh, landscape contractor, our uh, members of our subcommittee. Those test gardens are in the process of being uh, created at this time. Uh, they will be monitored and uh, their activity logged and tracked over the next several years to see how they come up. And uh, the plants are starting to be purchased by Mark Eisenhandler, who is our one of our um, uh, grounds staff and uh, has a real keen eye and experience for horticulture. Uh, this is a really exciting project to see kind of what our opportunities are going to be to replace some of our grass with native plantings, ground cover. Uh, we are going to be aerating the existing lawn uh, and using some soil emoluments and uh, implements to help improve our soil condition, which therefore uh, potentially reduces the amount of chemical treatment we need to do. Uh, so there is just a lot of good stuff happening. Um, on that note, though, we are doing a lawn treatment today. Um, there are parts of the lawn that we will not treat, and those uh, places that we do treat will be marked. Uh, so lots going on. Uh, I don't have anything else today for the update. Um, if you do have anything that you want me to include in the Chanticleer or in a future weekly update, of course, you know uh, where to find me. And I hope you all have a great day. Thanks so much.